Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 20th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and yep, yet again, I'm recording today from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier on Friday looked at yet another COVID-19 related piece of malware. Now, uh, the malware arrived with sort of a COVID-19 related email, but what was kind of special about the malware is that the malware itself was fairly generic and sort of used a template to create the email that would be used to spread it, but also a related malicious RTF document. This RTF document exploited the equation editor vulnerability. Uh, that's a little bit older vulnerability, but we still see this being abused quite a bit in these malicious emails and the actual exploit in the template did launch calc.exe, the Windows calculator, which is a standard sort of proof of concept kind of exploit. And it would then just swap it out for whatever PowerShell script this particular version of the attack was going to run. Also sort of interesting, the malware would actually only really run if you're running Outlook and then it would email itself to all of your Outlook contacts. So an example of commodity malware that we see just being spread out to millions of victims in the hope that a couple of them will fall for it. And on Friday, I reported how a signature update to Microsoft security apparently caused some problems and crashes for users. Uh, looks like Microsoft did the expected thing and published a new signature update that should have fixed this. Now, no action should really be necessary at this point unless you're still experiencing the crashes. In which case, you need to trigger a manual update of the signatures, and that should hopefully take care of your problems. And talking about security software going bad, uh, Sophos had to remove a firmware update for its UTM devices. Version 9.703 of the UTM firmware is causing issues with the web admin interface, so if you can't connect to it. In addition, there appear to be some reports of connection issues with the firewall, but the main symptom is you can no longer sort of log in uh, to the web admin interface of your Sophos UTM device. Sophos has removed the affected firmware from its site, so it should no longer be applied and has pushed out an automatic uh, signature update to fix hopefully the problem. Well, it looks like security devices is sort of the theme here today. And the next story is about uh, a vulnerability I actually have talked about uh, multiple times over the last year, and that's the Pulse Secure VPN vulnerability that sort of just keeps on giving. It's CVE 2019. 11.5.10. And I think the reason that this sort of stays in the news is it was sort of advertised as an information disclosure vulnerability, which some people may not have really taken that serious. But the one piece of information it discloses is Etsy password. And with that, of course, credentials. So a lot of credentials were stolen over the last year, even if you didn't really sort of notice a compromise of the device itself and you patch this, there is still a good chance that someone stole your Etsy password file and with that has now your credentials uh, in their hand or at least hashes, but is uh, of course busy trying uh, to brute force those hashes. And apparently those credentials are now being used. In particular, if you reused uh, those credentials in your Windows Active Directory infrastructure, seems that attackers are specifically targeting that to get into networks and then deploy ransomware. According to an advisory by the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, this is in particular targeting healthcare and hospitals, in addition, of course, to your usual government suspects. And Google released an update to Google Chrome. Uh, this update was released a bit out of order and fixes a single but critical vulnerability. The vulnerability uh, use after free vulnerability in Google Chrome's speech recognizer was reported actually by two different researchers, uh, Alpha Lab and Chihu360. 
Details of the bug have not been released as I'm recording this. Uh, Google holds off on releasing details until the majority of users have been patched. Of course, Google Chrome pretty much updates itself. So there's not really much that you can do. What you may want to do is just check the version number in uh, Google Chrome, usually your about dialogue or such. And that will actually trigger an update if you're out of date. Uh, just remember, you will have to restart Google Chrome after you do so. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.